Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Tuesday, December 5th. We're in the season of Advent and we begin with an opening sentence for Advent found on page 27. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Page 12, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. Apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And before we do the Benedictus S. Domine, we have a seasonal antiphon found on page 29 for Advent. And we'll open and close the uh, canticle uh, with this antiphon. Our King and Savior now draws near. Oh, come, let us adore him. On page 18, we have the Benedictus S. Domine. And we say this together. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. And glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, and glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our King and Savior now draws near. Oh, come, let us adore him. And now we'll have the scripture readings. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 89, the first 18 verses beginning on page 384. My song shall always be of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I ever be proclaiming your faithfulness from one generation to another. For I have said mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness shall be established in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Your seed will I establish forever and set up your throne from one generation to another. O Lord, the heavens will praise your wondrous works and your faithfulness in the assembly of the saints. For who in the clouds can be compared unto the Lord and who among the gods is like unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the council of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those who are round about him. O oh Lord, God of hosts, who is like you? Your faithfulness, most mighty Lord, is round about you. You rule the raging of the sea. You still the waves when they arise. You have subdued Rahab of the deep and destroyed her. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. 
You laid the foundation of the world and all that is in it. You have made the north and the south. Tabor and Herman shall rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand and high as your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Blessed are the people, O Lord, who rejoice in you. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Their delight shall be in your name all the day long, and in your righteousness shall they make their boast. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor you shall lift up our might. For the Lord is our defense, the Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Our reading this morning, fairly long one, is the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. And when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. And embarking in a ship for Adrianium, which was about to sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends to be cared for. And putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. And when we had sailed across the open sea along the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra and Lycia. There the centurion found a ship of Alexandria, sailing for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of days and arrived with difficulty off Nidus. And as the wind did not allow us to go farther, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salmon. Coasting along it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens, near which was the city of Lycia. Since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous, because even the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot, and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there on the chance that somehow they might reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Now when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete close to the shore. Not but soon, a tempestuous wind called the Northeaster struck down from the land, and when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. Running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run aground on the Cyprus, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I worship, and he said, Do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand before Caesar, 
and behold, God has granted you all those who still are still with you. So take heart, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. When the 14th night had come, as we were being driven across the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors suspected they were nearing land. So they took a sounding and found 20 fathoms. A little farther on, they took a sounding again and found 15 fathoms. And fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship and had lowered the ship's boat into the sea under pressure of laying out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the ship's boat and let it go. As day was about to dawn, Paul urged them all to take some food, saying, Today is the 14th day that you have continued in suspense without food, having taken nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take some food, for it will give you strength, for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, throwing out the wheat into the sea. Now when it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned, if possible, to run the ship ashore. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea, at the same time loosening the ropes that tied the rudders. Then, hoisting the foresail into the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the vessel aground. The bow struck and remained immovable, and the stern was being broken up by the surf. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any should swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for the land, and the rest on planks or pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for today is canticle number nine, God Be Merciful which is found on page 86. We say together, May God be merciful unto us and bless us and show us the light of his countenance and be merciful unto us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Indeed, let all the peoples praise you. Let all the nations rejoice and be glad. For you shall judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, even our own God, shall give us his blessing. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the world shall fear him. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 20 together. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O oh Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now have a time for intercessory prayer. And today our particular focus is the neighborhood surrounding Christ the King. Holy Father, everlasting God, we thank you and praise your name for your many mercies towards us. We would especially ask for your mercy towards the neighborhood in which our church dwells. We ask that you would allow the construction work being done to be done efficiently and quickly. And Lord, we pray for the many businesses and the, that need to continue to have customers in this neighborhood and for the people that live in this neighborhood that need to get in and out. We ask, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your everlasting kindness to them all. Heavenly Father, thank you for planting us in the Sombra del Monte neighborhood. Pray for the families that live there. I pray for the churches that are established there and for their members. May they continue to be servants of yours, remembering the gospel, remembering their commission and focus on their educating their people to be godly servants. Pray also, Lord, for um, the schools that are in the area. I know that um, Annunciation School is behind, it's just next door to us. And Lord, I ask that you raise up godly children from, from that school. I also ask for Bellhaven and the needs, the many needs of that school. Um, help us to be able to give them hope and encouragement through your love and mercy. We ask these things in your name, Lord. We continue in Advent with the general thanksgiving, which we say together. Almighty God, Father of mercies, we are unworthy servants to give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, all the blessings of this life, but above all for your measurable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. 
Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.